the new global access control list feature on the ASA firewall. Let's say, for example, we have 50 different interfaces and we need to allow or permit some common traffic on all 50. There's a couple of ways of doing it. One involves creating 50 ACLs and the other involves creating one. We'll take a look at that one option with a global ACL in this micro nugget. Let's jump in. So let's set the stage of what we're going to do. Let's say we have a DMZ server right here and it's ready to go. It's running. It's got this IP address to allow access from the internet to this device. We're going to do a couple things. Number one, we have to have a translation, a mapped address. So the address we're going to use in this example, we're going to use 192.168.1.176. And we'll just pretend between you and me that that's a globally routable address. And then secondly, we have to solve the problem of this security level. See, by default, Whenever a user, let's say I have a user on the internet who's trying to source a packet and they're trying to go into an interface on the ASA, if that packet is supposed to be forwarded to a higher security interface, like from zero going to 50, the ASA says, no, no way. I'm not pushing that water uphill. So by default, traffic, initial traffic, doesn't flow from low security to higher security interfaces like the outside to DMZ. So how do we solve that? Well, one way of solving that is with an access control list. We could create an access control list that says, please permit traffic from anywhere on the internet if it's destined to this server and the destination port is TCP port 80 for the web services. So that's what we could do with an access list. Now what happens if we have five or six new interfaces and we have users on all of these interfaces that also want to come in? Well, we'd have to create five or six more access lists. One for here, one for here, one for here, one for here, one for here. Instead of creating additional access list for every single interface, if we have a common need of allowing port 80 to this web server, we could use something called a global ACL. It's pretty sweet, and here's how it works. The global ACL applies logically to the entire box. So if there's any ACLs already on interfaces, those are considered first for inbound traffic. And then, instead of having the default deny any implied at the end, after the access list on the interface is processed, then we're kicked over to the global ACL. So in this situation, a user coming in on the outside interface, if there is an ACL, it would be checked first, and then the global ACL would be checked, and then there's a deny at the very end, an implied deny at the end of the global. So long story short, if there's 10 entries here and 16 entries here, if there's no matches in all 26 entries, then there's the implied deny at the end. So you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have interface ACLs if you want them, plus a global ACL. So let's demonstrate this. First of all, let's go ahead and do a quick test. Let's bring up a browser. This browser is from a device on our simulated internet right here. And we're going to go to that global address of 192.168.1.176 and just watch the blazing speed. It's going to time out. It's not going to make it. Why is that? It's not going to make it because we're trying to go uphill. The client out here on the internet is on coming in on this interface, security level zero. The packet needs to be forwarded to this interface, security level 50. It won't go. We have two solutions. We have an interface ACL, which we could use, or if we wanted to cover all the interfaces, we could use a global ACL. Because the topic of this micro nugget is global ACLs, let's choose that option. So to do that, we're going to bring up the ASDM, and ASDM under configuration, firewall, access rules. I have no access rules configured at all. I'm going to create a new one, and I'm not going to apply it to an interface. Instead, I'm going to say any. And that, my friend, is the key to creating a global ACL. So we're going to say traffic from anywhere going to, and we'll specify the IP address of our DMZ server with ASA version 8.3 and higher. The access control list need to point to the real IP address, not the mapped IP address. So that's the IP address of our DMZ server. I've double clicked on it, brought it down here. I'm going to say just permit the traffic if it's TCP and it happens to be HTTP. By double clicking that, brings it down here, and we're set. So this is a global ACL. I'll click OK. It applies it. It has the same syntax as an extended ACL, except what we're doing is we're applying it globally rather than applying it logically inbound to a given interface. So now that that's done, if I click on send, let's bring back our client. So this is our timeout from before. He's not too happy. In fact, I'm going to close that browser. Don't trust it. Let me bring it back a new one, and let's go to that same global address, 192.168.1.176. And now it works. 
And sometimes, you know, for fun, you can write little messages to yourself on your test web servers. Good job, it's working. <laughs> when you get something working like that. So what have we covered in this micro nugget? Besides having a little fun, we've identified the purpose of an access control list. And that is to override the default policy for initial traffic flows through an interface of the ASA. A global ACL is an ACL that we can create that hovers and logically applies permit or deny statements inbound on all of the interfaces. It's only processed after an access list on an interface, if present, is processed. There's an implied deny at the end of the global ACL. It could be used if we have lots of interfaces and they all have exactly the same need. That's a perfect application. We demonstrated the creation of it using ASDM and we verified it worked by opening up a browser. I appreciate you joining me. For a more in-depth look at the interaction between access list applied to interfaces and the global ACLs, come visit us in our CCNP security firewall class at CBT Nuggets. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.